Greetings, YouTube. The doctor is in. Dr. Urias Papers here coming at you with another commentary on Dungeons and & Dragons. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the world of Greyhawk because it looks like the world of Greyhawk is going to be the world for Dungeons & Dragons 2024. We're doing a series of videos on the previews for Dungeons & Dragons 2024. And before you right now is a map that is supposedly the map that we're going to see for... Uh, the world of Greyhawk. I don't know. What, I don't know what supplement or what book they're going to put this out in. This might end up being in the Dungeon Master's Guide because they have insinuated that uh, the Dungeon Master's Guide is going to have some Greyhawk stuff in it. They have talked about some Greyhawk characters pretty heavily, which have been named in in the previous version of Dungeons and Dragons, which is the Circle of Eight, which is integral to a lot of the later history of Greyhawk. So this is the map that we got. And uh, there is, we're going to look at an earlier version of this map and just look at some changes that have taken place. So here is the first version of this map here. And so if we start up here at the Dromage Ocean, We've got the Tiger Nomads, the Sultanate of Zeef, the Caliphate of Ekber, and Tuzmit. And if we look at the same map, we've got the Dromage Ocean. Uh, the Tiger Nomads has been changed to the Chakyik. The Caliphate of Ekber has been changed to the Sultanate. And the Sultanate of Zeef is still there, and now it is the Pashlik of Tuzmit. So there are some changes in this. And again, the the Burnial Forest, uh, that, that didn't really change. We got Wegwer, which in this was the Wolf Nomad. So these are actually earlier names of these nomads. Blackmoor is here, and the Cold Marshes. And on the map that we're getting here, we still get the cold marshes, but now it's called Arn. And I'm going to guess that Watsi may not own all the rights to all the Blackmoor stuff. And so they have renamed this Arn probably after Dave Arneson. And uh, there are some ruins up here. Those ruins are also on the original map there's ruins it says right there and then below that of course is we've got Ayus, parent land horn society um ket kingdom of furyandi the shield lands things like that and on the new map all those things are still there so there's Ayus, the vez forest parent land voluna kingdom of furyandi horn society shield lands bandit kingdom the hunting lands are different because on the older map, the hunting lands are the Rover of the Barons, which is on this second half of the map right here. But the Bandit Kingdoms are still there. So also, I mean, so we've got, you know, a number of changes. The Great Kingdom is here. There are essentially four great powers in, the, in this world at this particular point in time. That is the Kingdom of Keoland the Kingdom of Furyandi, the Kingdom of Nairand, and then the Great Kingdom. Those are the four main powers. And then there are some, some kind of mid-card powers, the Sultanates and the Caliphates uh, in this area, plus Ket, are all uh, kind of, they're all related sort of to each other. The Barbarians of the North, which they have changed some of these, but these um, they've changed them to the names of the tribes that they were named after. So Hold of the Stone Fist didn't change. The Northern Kingdom of Frutzi, the Northern Kingdom of Shanai, and the Normer Northern Kingdom of Krutski. Those are all names that are different, but they are relatable. So if we look here... It's the Frost Barbarians, the Ice Barbarians, the Snow Barbarians. But the Frost Barbarians are Fruitsi, the Snow Barbarians are the Shanai, and the Ice Barbarians are the Kruitsi in the timeline. So, yes, 
there are some changes that, that are taking place. Now, one other thing I noticed about this particular map is it comes, and we're going to talk a little bit about the timeline. Uh, this map comes from a time that predates a very significant event in the history of Greyhawk, which was called the Greyhawk Wars. Now, just a little, a little background. This is the original World of Greyhawk setting that came out by Gary Gygax in 1980. And then it was reprinted again in, I believe this was 1990, uh, here it is, written by Gary Gygax, credits 1983. So this one was reprinted in 1983. And then this is the map that came along with that. And you can see that it's, it's been folded. And then in 1991, we get the Greyhawk Wars adventure book by David Zeb Cook, 1991. And so there are some very significant changes that happen. But I'm going to put this map back up here. You can see here, you can see all these four powers here. But this, this here is the map uh, post-Greyhawk Wars. And so there's some differences here. The Great Kingdom essentially no longer exists. And um, Ayuz has greatly expanded the she um, into the shield lands. So the shield lands is on this, but it is now part of Ayuz. And I, the empire of Ayuz covers most of the northern part. And I mean, for the most part, those are the big changes. The Scarlet Brotherhood is down here still, but they also have sway over another of a uh, bunch of regions in here. And then the Pomarge down here also um, has uh, sway in a bunch of different areas. So this is a post Greyhawk Wars map, whereas the other map that we're getting from Wizards of the Coast is is more or less it looks like it's a pre uh it's a pre Greyhawk Wars map. Now um there have been another number of supplements here. So there's this one from 1980. There again there's the one from 1983. There's the map. Each one of these comes with a timeline. So if we go through this, there is a timeline right here. So here's the timeline right here. This is the timeline, and it has significant dates. This timeline here ends in 576, common year. And the second supplement, which was reprinted in 1983, has a very similar timeline. So it gives the winners and the months, and I'm, I'm going to assume that most of that stuff is going to make its way into uh, the, the new history. But this is the new timeline here. And again, it looks very much like the old one, and it ends in 576. There is a good website here that is on the World of Greyhawk timeline from the Great Library of Greyhawk. And uh, it has a very extensive timeline. And as you can see, the timeline starts at minus 14,400 in this. There's a lot of different supplemental material that's been written about Greyhawk over the years. A lot of adventures, a lot of different things, a lot of box sets have been made. And uh, that's where a lot of this information comes from. Really, what they're talking about here is um, this timeline here, this minus 5,515 and uh, the expansion of the Sulois and the Baklunish, which are the two first kind of great civilizations in the Flanes, which is the continent where the world of Greyhawk is. And uh, they're more, if we look at this map, they are more over to the west side of this map. So the northern part of this here is Baklunish territory, and the southern part where this thing that's called the Sea of Dust is, that was... Sulosian territory. So um, some significant dates to take note of in this are the Great Migrations, so around minus 500. This is when the Sulos and the Baklunish started their war with each other. 
And then around the time of, I believe it is 400-ish, there was a 422. Here it is right here. There's this thing called the Invoked Devastation and the Reign of Colorless Fire. So these are essentially nuclear weapon level magics that are unleashed upon the world. And the Reign of Colorless Fire, which was unleashed by the Baklunish, created the Sea of Dust. And the Invoked Devastation basically caused the dry steppes and the plains, which have grown back since. And it caused the Bach Lunish from further west to migrate east. And it caused the, Su the Sulois to also migrate east. So those are some significant dates. Recent dates, which are more or less significant, are far, far, far in the forward. This goes all the way to about year 600. So remember I said that the the original books from 1980 and 1983, those went out to 576. These actually go out to 600. And the big things to note in this are Morning Canaan is born in 509. 505 is essentially when Ayuz is taking power, and Ayuz is like the big bad. He's a... He's a half-demon demigod that is within the world. So I use the old disappears. Um, and some other significant events in this as well. So I use returns after some time. And there are some uh, adventures that are written about this. 576 is right here. So this is the Guide of the World completed. So that's that, that's that book. Leomin retires from the Circle of Eight. So Leomin is one that is in the Circle of Eight, but he is not mentioned um, very much. And then the Greyhawk Wars start around 582. And that's when things change. And these go on for about, I, I think, about three or four years, 583, 584. And then 585, there's a peace, and the world is carved up by the remaining powers of Keoland, Furiandi, Nairond, and now the Scarlet Brotherhood. Now, the Scarlet Brotherhood in the new map is down here called Shar, which is an older name or what the Scarlet Brotherhood call themselves. But in the old map, see, they're here as the Scarlet Brotherhood, and on this old map, they are way down here as the Scarlet Brotherhood, okay? So that's a little bit about the world of Greyhawk. Now, they have mentioned the Circle of Eight quite a bit as well, and one of the first mentions of the Circle of Eight in uh, all the literature, again, is by an adventure that was written by David Zeb Cook called Vecna Lives. So David Zeb Cook... Uh, was instrumental in writing a lot of the second edition stuff. He's been around TSR since about 1978, 1979, which was when Advanced Dungeons and Dragons were coming out. And so he was involved in, you know, with the original PHB and the original Dungeon Master's Guide and the original Monster Manual, but also a lot of the supplements that have come out then. And uh, Gary Gygax left in 1985 and essentially a, a lot Lawrence Schick and David Cook uh, helmed most of the writing of things after that so um, this was written in 1991 19 well 1990 is the copyright on it and uh, if we go here to page 78 we've got some uh, NPCs in here as well, and some of these you may recognize the same the names, and some of them you may not. And if we go to pay up, uh, like Cost the Terrible, so we know who he is. He is the henchman of Vecna, so he's in this. This is a Vecna, 
and if we go to an avatar of Vecna, of Tur Turim, Verostock, Vecna, Halmadar. So there's a lot of different uh, incarnations of Vecna in this. And then we go to pre-generated player characters because you can actually play the Circle of Eight in here. And so the Circle of Eight in here are Big B. So here is Big B. And it gives a little description of Big B. Uh, just a, just a, a slight description, not very much of one. It's an 18th level mage. We've got a uh, draw mage, 16th level mage. We've got, and it gets all their spells and everything. And these are all second edition stuff. And then we've got Jalarzy, Salivarian. So Jalarzy was just mentioned in the, uh, the recent article that was a preview of the spells that came out. And then after that, uh, gives the description of her. And then we've got Nistol from Nistol's Magic Aura. And after Nistol, we've got Autoluke, 16th level mage, and then Auto. And here's a picture of all of them. There's Jalarzy. There's all of them there. And uh, after that, we've got Rary. And finally, we've got Tensor. And that is the circle of eight. And then they go through some henchmen. Now, there is one, uh, there is one very uh, important thing to pick out from this, and that is when the piece is being signed, Rary turns on the other ones. He turns on the uh, the other members of the circle of eight, and some of them are actually killed. And it looks like this is not. Uh, the the map and the timeline that we're getting with the new D&D &D 2024 is not going to reflect that. So, and like I said, this one goes all the way out to the year 600. Uh, but it looks like we're going to get like 575, 576. And there's a lot of different events, but you can all, you can look at this from the, uh, the, the Greyhawk library or just go into Google and type uh, Greyhawk Timeline, and this will come up right away. So all the Greyhawk War stuff, and I'm trying to find on here. Let's see here. Rary. Pact of Greyhawk. Let's see, that is... Is that so it doesn't really say in here but there is a, there is a there is a um an event where rary turns on the circle of eight so that's just a little bit about the new map that we're getting and a little bit about the history of greyhawk and the differences between this map and what we're going to see with the old map and where you can find some of this stuff um, a lot of this stuff is available on uh, Dungeon Master's Guild, the old stuff, so it's uh, it's readily available. So, all right, that is what I have for everybody today. I appreciate everybody tuning in, and I will catch everybody later.